The bad news is the world is in even more turmoil. The good news, crypto had a great bounce off that bottom from yesterday. Almost always price drop to lows when bombs are dropping. Now, I want to salute those 13 Ukrainian soldiers who bravely told the Rus Russian warship to go F themselves when they were ordered to surrender. And that moment has gone kind of viral. It is the human spirit of freedom and bravery like that which has given us the mostly free world that most of us enjoy presently. They are heroes in my opinion. Now, what does this relate to crypto? I know I came into crypto as an investment vehicle to make my money make more money for me. My guess is most of you are here in crypto for similar reasons as well. We'll get into the market bottom we hit yesterday and we're going to talk about probabilities of it going to absolutely incredible heights from here and also the two huge risks still out there that could derail this train in the short term. We'll get into what I feel many people are sleeping on and what they're crazy, why they're crazy to sleep on it. Also some NFT news, some giveaways of three Kitsu from Kitsumon and also our one chain giveaway. It's an action packed day. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. And if you like money in crypto and you're looking for a real investor's take on the crypto market, you can join the Rainmaker family by just liking this video and subscribing with that all notifications bell enabled. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not, um, this isn't financial advice. I am a crypto investor myself sharing with you how I think about the crypto market and specific cryptos I like. Note, I do own or plan to own most of what I talk about on this channel because I don't talk about projects that I don't see a future in or believe in. We do want to thank our Patreon members, including our two newest members, Nurse Cooper, who we saw on the pre-stream that we just did, and Brian K. We do have a private Discord that our Patreon members get access to. There is a link below to our Patreon if that interests you. Now, make your rain on that like button and strap in for the show. Let's welcome our producer, D-Money, joining me in the Crypto Rain Command Center. Hey, hey, what up? Happy Friday to you, Rain. Happy Friday to Chris Ashby, Rhododendro Fried Food Rocks, Anna Maria Sardina. Can you touch on VeChain, please? We'll see if, uh, if we have time to do that. But yeah, good to see everybody today. Um, I'm, I'm so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little exhausted, man. I don't know how you are. Um, <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, it's just been like, I don't know. It's been a, it's been a rough week. Uh, it feels like for me, at least within the market. So, um, so yeah, I'm super excited that it's, uh, it's the weekend coming up. Um, yeah, I mean, how are you? Like, like it was nice that the market bounced back so quickly, but like seeing everything fall like that. I mean, how do you? How do you handle that? Yeah, just you become a little bit numb to it because, you know, major dips like this, I've experienced like five or six, right? So it, there was a, a way worse one that happened. I think it was March of 2020. And we're going to talk about that and the relevance because, yeah, when it was already down, it was can we agree the crypto was already way down? Yeah, for sure. And then it just goes down farther and it's like, oh, my gosh. And this is when some people pull that ripcord and they bail out. They bail out right before some really good things. And um, it, it is hard. This is why so many people get shaken out. And this is why only the tenacious make money in crypto. Like when you came in, I'm sure you were looking around. And you're like, man, this is so great. We're all going to be rich. And realize we're not all going to be rich. No, the tenacious who stick through these types of events that play it contrary to the way most people play it. They do extremely well. Most the other people... They buy at highs and they sell at lows and then they peace out and they do it over and over again. Well, that's why I'm happy to be here today, man, because it's uh, <laughs> hearing that kind of a thing. It's like, all right, all right, the, you know, the sky isn't falling. We're, we're going to be okay. Let's get the party started. Let's do it. Yeah, looking over at the comments already. Dougie is saying, hey, Chris, I'm emotionally drained, but great pickup prices. Yes, they are great pickup prices right after it drains all your emotions out, and it's the hardest to buy, right? So thank you for joining us. These past few months have really set up a situation where the market can really take off and surprise people. Remember the adage, the market takes the most amount of money from the most amount of people. This is still true. 
But do you remember just three months ago, most everyone in crypto was super bullish. I mean, do you remember all those longs being liquidated? Because, I, I mean, so many people were taking these leverage longs. How is the general market sentiment now? Is it to a place that if it went way, way bullish from now, actually it would liquidate a whole lot of shorts? I think we're pretty close to that. It is much, much more bearish environment. And this is good because this is the environment where we can really see a huge upswing. And I think the bottom is in, but there are still two major events that could bring the market back to these lows or even lower. So we need to be aware of them. But we don't know for sure if these, how these events will play out. And in the case of one of them, if it will play out. Now, like I said, when bombs are falling, the market usually tanks, but I have often seen a strong rally afterwards because the uncertainty is now gone. And even if we don't like what is happening, at least we know what is happening and it gives us more certainty. Likely because of what is happening in Ukraine, the U.S. Federal Reserve will be less hawkish on increasing interest rates and continue buying bonds to put money into the market. That will continue to drive higher inflation, which is good for crypto and positive for stock prices though bad for savings accounts that are denominated in fiat. I've been looking for what pattern best helps me understand what is going on with this savage pullback during this past three months and during the middle of what should still be a bull market, and yet it's not acting like it, is it? And I realized exactly what pattern to look at. So let's look at Bitcoin here and what's happening during this bull market or what should be a bull market so we saw this early run up here and so this is right at the end of 2020 and it went completely bullish peaking in april all the way at like 65,000, which was really early now back in 2013 cycle it did the same thing with an early year run up and it peaked a little bit faster and it retraced much quicker this is a little bit more rounded because the market has more weight. There's way more people involved. So it went up a little bit slower and it retraced a little bit slower too, but it sure retraced. And then we had this big bounce off the bottom at 30,000. We went way up again and it, it came right back down. But okay, so this was a little bit of an over pump, but boy, what causes big retracement and what should be the middle of a very bullish sentiment? So as, as I was thinking about that this last week, it made me think about way back in, well, see, before many of your time in crypto, a few of you were around back here. This is 2020. In the middle of March of 2020, um, we had this big, big pullback. But look before that. I have it labeled on the screen. What the F is this pump? And basically, in the middle of what should have been a bear market, we had this big pump, and there was some market factors driving this. There was this big Bitcoin scam. It was a Bitcoin Ponzi scheme happening in China that was huge. It had a PhD out of India that was involved, selling people, using her credibility to sell people on it. It turns out it was just like a big Ponzi scheme and scam, and a lot of those people went to jail. But it pumped up, you know. They were told that that they would get high returns on their investment, really high returns on their investment, and even some payouts were happening. And um, yeah, so I, most all of the team was anonymous except for this PhD, and she was later arrested. And yeah, it then crashed, but it pumped in the middle of a bull market or bear market when it should have stayed pretty down, it went crazy high. Now in the middle of our bull market, man, this is a huge retracement. I really like um, the, the Bitcoin stock to flow ratio, stock to flow model, or model. And I feel like it encapsulates really well what the true value of Bitcoin is. And the true value of Bitcoin, according to plan B stock to flow model, is at right about now, it's about $108,000 per Bitcoin. And it's trading way down here at 37000 or below. And so we're vastly undervalued in the middle of what should be a bull market. Just like in the bear market, we pumped in the middle of what should have been a bear market. So I do think it'll correct. And when it corrects upwards, what's funny is gains tend to lead to bigger gains. So I still believe 
very strongly that we have another leg of the bull run coming and it's going to be massive. That's really exciting. However, that we could be at the bottom and I think we are these two things to watch for which would really drive us further towards an even lower bottom. The first thing is the U.S. or President Biden coming out with an executive order that is terrible for crypto. The truth is we don't know what Biden's opinion is on crypto. I think we figured out what Janet Yellen's opinion is on crypto, but that's not necessarily Biden's opinion. We don't know, though he is working towards coming out with one. And he ordered all the agencies to look into it, probably too, because politicians are usually beholden to their lobbyists. Probably some of his lobbyists are involved in. I don't frankly know what their opinions are going to be. Um, so I do know that Mike Novogratz seems to think, seem to think before the election that the Biden administration would be pretty positive for crypto. I hope that plays out. Item number two that's a concern, because if that came out and it was really unfavorable for crypto, that could be terrible, at least in the short term, for crypto. In the long term, crypto is still going to happen. The U.S. doesn't have enough power to stop it. All they do is have enough power to slow it down. The second thing is, unfortunately, American weakness is not a good thing for the world. And the only thing that keeps bad guys with weapons at bay is stronger good guys with weapons. And Biden has shown himself as, can we agree, fairly weak. Like the guy in a movie that gets a gun thrown to him and the clip falls out. And then he fumbles with it and drops it on the ground and <laughs> resorts to calling the perpetrator bad names. I don't know. I just... I don't know Biden directly, but that's just what it seems, right? You know, in the movie, and they're like, throw the gun to him. They're like, blah, drops, clip, falls out. Oh, crap. And start calling the attacker bad names. Isn't that kind of... And see, this weakness has broader implication. The big concern is that China now invades Taiwan. That is a much more serious thing. Not that what's happening in Ukraine isn't serious. And I, our hearts reach out to all the people that are out there. And if that happens with Taiwan... That will lead to a bigger dip in the market. And hopefully America shows some strength, although strength isn't necessarily like getting involved in a war with Russia. Hopefully just strong sanctions because there are lots of things these days that countries can do against other countries that aren't war. Um, and I think everyone is pretty gr much agrees with me. No one wants World War Three. So as of now, I give it a 60% chance that uh, China invades Taiwan. I wish it wasn't that high, and I hope I'm dead wrong on that. Now, even if, I, uh, even if that does happen, though, um, I say that I hope it doesn't happen, not just for the five-year plan, which, honestly, the five-year plan that we talk about on this channel will probably still do just fine, even if that does happen. When we look back at the lows during the bear market in March of 2020, there was a worldwide feeling that this new virus that we didn't know much about would have a really high mortality rate. And there was plenty of fear that that would happen and that it could lead to bigger implications. And yet right then, so let's go back on the charts and let me show you. Right then turned out to be the low and look what happened after that low, right? So. We bottomed out here, and imagine if you go back in time and you could buy Bitcoin at, it actually hit 3,800, where it shows it when we're this zoomed out. Would you buy Bitcoin at 3,800, right? So that was when, like, bombs were falling, and, and, and not, like, literal, like, bombs, but, like, the massive concern was the biggest, and the stock market took a huge plunge. And it happened over a couple days, and then it bottomed out, and then it started this long climb out, 3,800, and then pretty soon it was at 5,900, then pretty soon it was all the way at 7,000. It would go up and then retrace a little bit, and then we were talking about $10,000 Bitcoin, back to 8,000, and it played these games, went sideways, and then look at that massive run. I wouldn't be too shocked if we see playing around with these prices and slowly pick up, leading to then a very parabolic move that goes absolutely parabolic. And that's pretty exciting. So we do have some news that we're going to cover today as well. But before we get to that, let's get into some uh, our Kitsu giveaway and we have on the screen uh, the gaming projects now these are kind of tied together but after we go through these gaming projects that we're going to talk about we're going to do our giveaway 
Just before we get into the gaming projects, I want to bring up something, so make sure I don't forget. Um, I'm going to be buying some of these myself. Cornucopia is opening in just an hour and 44 minutes, their bubble jet sale. And I have <laughs> enough loaded into my wallet here. I think I can buy six. So I'm going to be buying six of them. And uh, that gives me a chance of possibly getting a legendary, though I'd love to get a mythic. I've got almost no chance. Likely I'll probably get at least one rare and then some of these. A lot of fun there. 120 Cardano each was about $80. So maybe I'll even send some more Cardano over so I can up my chances towards, I don't know, I'd love to get one of these mythics. Cornucopius is one of the games we'll talk about today, but they are having this sale. Also, I didn't even check my place in line, but I did go ahead and get in line for the NFL all-day packs. And let's see, my place in line is, well, there are 15,575 people ahead of me. My wait time is more than an hour. Well, I got 12,065 right Woo! now. So. Nice. What now, Rain? Yeah, yeah, you'll be buying before me. Now, um... NFL All Day, I like, and I have been picking up this is NFL All Day's website. Now, if you've been with the channel for a long time, you probably know that before I started this channel, I bought NBA Top Shots packs. And what's funny is the market was kind of down just like we are now. So a lot of people weren't paying attention to NBA Top Shots and were sleeping on them big time. And I remember, like, I had bought some packs and everything thinking, I think these are going to do really well, but I don't know for sure. I just think they will and sure enough they've done tremendously now i invested about eleven hundred dollars into nba top shots back then a year and a half ago and by march of 2021 my eleven hundred dollar investment was worth about a hundred and eighty five thousand dollars now it's since retraced and it's only worth maybe forty fifty thousand dollars i haven't checked lately um, I didn't sell any there because I felt like, and I still feel like, a bigger pump will still yet come. And that some of those moments will absolutely go crazy as the whole world focuses on crypto. So, I, one of the reasons it's done so well is season one tends to do well. And in FL all day, this is season one. And so you can go and you can pick up things on the market. So I think this is actually some of the ones that I bought. But if you can go to the marketplace, oh, they'll be shutting down the marketplace probably for the drop. So it'll be temporarily shut down. And you can pick up some of this stuff. Now, whether you, I'm, I'm possibly buying a pack, but I spent the last two days as well picking up some of these moments. And it still seems like the prices are falling on these. So if you're interested in these, you might wait a couple of days. They're in no way a sponsor or anything of the video, but I like to buy things when they're cheap. I like to buy things that I think will do well, and it's one of the biggest sports in the world being officially licensed by a project that's already shown that it does well with NBA Top Shots. I like uneven bets where my chances of winning really, really big are a lot better than my chances of losing, so I bet pretty heavy on this one. Yeah, and I like this. I mean, it's a lot. Of, it's it's easy, right? Like you connect, uh, you get a Dapper account. Um, I mean, I was able to just use a credit card um, to load some funds in. You don't. You can buy stuff just with your credit card if you don't have funds loaded already. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty pretty easy as far as entry goes into this, and then you know do a little bit of research and. Um, yeah, see if see if anything looks cool to you, and, and maybe maybe take a shot if you if you'd like not financial advice per usual. Yeah, so I wanted to get into our uh, let's see. On Monday's video, we did a th uh, I, I had a question, and I asked the audience what your thoughts are on what game is going to be the biggest crypto game in two years from now. And that we would do our giveaway today related to that. So in order to enter this giveaway, you already had to submit your answers. And so you responded to the comments in the comment section there. And we got your responses and we have them on the screen today. And we're going to go through and see what you think. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, one of the subscribers couldn't get his answer to stick at all. And we did go through and pull out some of the ones it sends to like the help for review. And we went through and pulled all the ones out of the hell for review and put them through there. But still, this one wasn't in there. So I'm going to read this one to you. 
Um, and his thought was it was Battle of Guardians. So let me pull up Battle of Guardians, which I have here, I think. And here's their Twitter. So if you go to their Twitter, you can see what Battle of Guardians is all about. And here's their website. I think Battle of Guardians is going to be one of the most popular crypto games. They'll stand the test of time, a.k.a. the Crypto Winter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through these different games. And I want to hear your votes for who makes the best case for what they believe in and if you and if you like it. So you can vote just in the uh, chat section of tell us which of these. Now, if you'd wait till I go through these, that way you've heard all the things and then give us your answers and you're gonna help us pick the winners. Remember, we have three winners and I think we have about seven or eight total entries. So Battle of Guardians, mm, I mean, the website looks really good. Um, it looks kind of like Street Fighter and we were talking about this one, but also you were saying, um, D, that they're, well, let me read further. Uh, let me share with you his um, reasoning on why he felt like this was good. Now think of like Street Fighter Tekken for the crypto space, but with a catch, rather than a fighting opponent's characters who have the same abilities as yours, your characters will be able to develop their own unique skill set and unlock advanced fighting combinations which could be unique to your character. Now, it's incubated by Good Games Guild. Battle of Guardians is a real-time multiplayer NFT fighting game developed in Unreal Engine and built on the Solana network. Within the game, players engage in fierce multi-realm battles. It is being developed for PC as we speak, but the team has plans for iOS and Android apps in the future with cross-platform multiplayer ability. Has these different game modes, Story, Arena, and PvP, um, the team has done multiple AMAs on various YouTube channels, and they are pretty responsive in Telegram. They're experienced in the space, and the team seems solid to me. I want to include something else he said here. Um, Battle of Guardians will feature two tokens, namely the Battle of Guardians Share and Fighting Points. Both will be useful for participating in game modes, purchasing NFT characters and in-game items, and staking. Um, if this all doesn't sound good enough, here's the cherry on the cake. It's backed by some of the top VCs in the crypto space, one of the most notable names being Master Ventures. Given the timeless nature of street fighting games like Street Fighter and Tekken, the limited time commitment these games take versus longer and more complex strategy games is a great point there. I see this one gaining traction, especially when the mobile versions are, are launched. Now that Solana is out of the narrative, this game is trading below its IDO price with a fully diluted market cap of 19 million. Great suggestion. Love those numbers. There we go. That was a very good entry. The other ones we'll be able to read together. So that was Battle of Guardians. Chris Ashby said, great video day as usual. I think Legends of Crypto game will be the biggest blockchain game in the coming two years because it is a game that's very similar to many household names such as Pokemon. And we did actually show you the gameplay. We are able to participate in the alpha or the beta test, I don't remember, um, and recorded a video on that just like two weeks ago. I went through there in Citus NFT Heroes and showed you the early gameplay for Citus. That's really early, that gameplay. But Legend of Crypto game, that um, so that you can see what that is. The fact that you can earn tokens and you can exchange for cash is huge. But also the game is soon to be mobile friendly and the games are very short, which gives the users quick victory, much like Angry Birds. The game was developed with help from Blizzard, so they have certainly incorporated elements into the game to make it fun, addicting, and easy to play for the masses. All of those ingredients make for a very successful game. Great one by Chris. This is Legends of Crypto game here. Um, if you haven't watched that video, we do actually play it so that you can see what that's all about. So it's kind of like a card-based game, and you can play the game. Um, fun graphics. They incorporate some things. They even have some crypto influencers in there, which is kind of fun. All right. Great suggestion by Chris Ashby. Vasco says, I think the most successful game in the next two years will be FODA because it is a triple a metaverse project with a great team which gets along very well with all the supporters of the game and being close to future players too that is not foda spoiler alert fight of the ages there we go foda is a triple a metaverse game integrating with microsoft mesh technology now 
Foda, one of, I think, the advantages that they have is that they're a multiplayer online battle arena, which saves a lot of development time. And if you think one of the two of the biggest games in the world are Dota 2 and League of Legends, which are uh, MOBAs as well. And so they're competing in a space that we know is successful. It takes less, much less time to develop than, say, what uh, Endless Battlefield or some of the other projects are working on. Um, those games take anywhere from four to five years, where Foda might have something that's playable, you know, in just a year to year and a half from development time. So, great suggestion from Vasco. So, we have so far uh, Legend of Crypto game. We have Battleverse. That is not Battleverse. Or, excuse me, Battle of Guardians, Legend of Crypto game. And I've got these out of order. Who didn't notice? All right. Dennis says, I am most excited about Kopi, Cornucopias. The reason I believe so much is unlike other play-to-earn games like Star Atlas, Cornucopia is going to allow you to play the game with a small investment. This will allow more people to get into the game, which will allow the game to grow at a faster pace. The idea of a farming building type of game has already been proven to be a top seller in the non-play-to-earn game genre, and Cornucopias will be no different except you can play and actually make money while you play. Great suggestion from Dennis. Now, Cornucopias, let's see. I might have these way out of order, so my apologies uh, while I find, uh, okay, and put them in the right order. The Island Awaits. We've call, covered Cornucopias extensively. In fact, we've had them on the channel twice and really enjoyed my discussions with them. They are the biggest AAA game that I've seen so far built on the Cardano platform really excited to see what they do in fact to participate in the cornucopius bubble jet sale you have to load some cardano on a nami wallet which is kind of like a metamask wallet but it's on the cardano blockchain so that you'll be able to participate right from there anyway great suggestion on cornucopius yeah, and that's in an hour and a half um that uh sale that sale yeah for sure so let's look at, I like this entry. Hey, Rain, great stuff as usual <laughs> by Can Dam. Thank you. That's not really an entry. I just wanted to <laughs> compliment myself. <laughs> um, Phil Rice says, I would like to enter the giveaway. My top crypto pick is Decimated, D-I-O. They have been developing their game for almost four years now. It is going to be the very first AAA crypto game, which will be released in Q4 this year. They got great backing. With the top of the n the niche investors and an experienced team, their game will also be released on PlayStation and Xbox in the next years, and the market cap is heavily undervalued with around $12 million at this point. Just to mention, two more AAA games that I think have great potential, Guild of Guardians, which is built by the Immutable X team, and Sidus, or Sidus, which has been which has incredible investors and a market cap of $23 million. Great suggestions by Phil. We're only going to enter the one in there, which is Decimated, which we have covered Decimated as well, and we really like Decimated. And I am totally out of order. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm not. Okay, so there we have Decimated as our next entry. I'm really, really curious as to what all of you will say. Ice Coffee says, oh, good, my therapy session. We appreciate that, um, Ice Coffee. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm missing, I thought, I, I did read one, okay. Jester's Rune says, biggest blockchain game within next two years, Illuvium. This is a fully thought out project. They know who they are as a team and what their goals are clearly. Outstanding experience management team that partner together well. I completely agree. We interviewed Kieran Warwick. He was phenomenal. He's their uh, CEO. 200-person dev team basing the game off of Pokemon, Axie, Infinity successes, along with approved mechanics and storyline. AAA, designed to be sustaining over many years, built to be handed into the gamers to self-manage, decentralize. Huge following, two games in one, mobile and PC, beautiful NFTs and graphics, explore and build and fight. I love it. Yeah. Very, very good suggestion by... Jester's Rune. For those that haven't watched on Luvium, um, it is, I, I love it. We interviewed Kieran quite a while back, actually, 
and uh, they are pretty far along in development. I mean, they you can see some video of the actual gameplay being tested in a dev environment. And it's quite incredible. It's a lot of fun to watch. It's what you always wanted with, like, Pokemon and stuff. So eventually, so essentially, you can go out in the world. You can catch these alluvials. And you have a chance to catch them, but they might get away. And you might miss out on catching an alluvial that might be worth, like, $100,000. Man, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is one of the ones that I am, like, absolutely going to play. And look at these graphics. I mean, that is just so freaking cool. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think I think they're going to do a phenomenal job. So great suggestion by Jester's Rune. All right, and then we got one more from one from 158 Beats, a project that has potential to grow in the next two years due to the hype surrounding the purchase of NFT land. Is Eartha? It is a mix between SimCity and TEG that has added to the possibility of buying land in any country in the world. And that can generate FOMO. Another game that would be already more of a bet, since there is no gameplay, is the first-person shooter game that is being developed right now exclusively for Ultra. And he says, no pain, or no pain, no gain. <laughs> I think he meant to put no rain, no gain. Rainmakers. Hey, thanks, 158 Beats. So we did look at Eartha a little bit. In the limited time we had beforehand, we were trying to put some more, because this one I'm not familiar with. So the trading of Eartha is live on Bybit. Um, which Bybit has really cut into um, the uh, centralized exchange game. They really started as a leverage trading platform and have become like a centralized exchange as well. So Eartha, what is interesting is this is also backed by Master Ventures. I hadn't heard of this one, but looking at it, it looked really interesting. You can actually like reserve. You can buy like areas for their NFT land sale all over the Earth. Now I have seen some different ones where you can buy land all over the Earth, and some of those were like uh, I almost want to say scams. Like, do you guys remember Earth Two that came out like in March and it was a big thing, and a bunch of people were hitting me up to cover it, and I was like, uh, I just not sure. It's like legit. Don't know anything about the team and everything. Oh, yeah, but it's the earth and you can buy it. So if this is backed by Master Ventures, then I feel a lot less concerned about it being a scam. But, like, you can buy these hexes um, and, uh, yeah, really, really interesting. So it looks like anywhere that has, like, green and stuff, like, that's available. Or, or the countries are open. Let's see. Looks like this is open. Let's see what California. I want some beach property. Looks like most of the beach property is probably sold. Can get some beach property there. Nice. Let's see what's going on down in Mexico. It has some amazing beaches. I don't know. I just like beaches. So let's check out the only beach one, property. Jay. Yep, the only one. I'm sure nobody else in the channel absolutely loves beaches. So for sale actually is the bright green. Minted is the darker green. So I guess this means for sale. Wow, it says, oh, reserved. I was going to say yellow says my tokens. I'm like, that's amazing. They must have donated a whole bunch to me because <laughs> I'm not even logged in. And number two, I know I haven't purchased any. Cool. Um, yeah, great suggestion. Now we turn it over to you. I want to know what you think. You're going to determine the winners here, so we'll be looking at your comments. And we'll determine our top three based on what you think. So go ahead. Yeah, start hitting us up with that, and um, while we go through, we're going to go through some news. Tell us who you think the winner there is. We also have a wand chain giveaway that we'll give you the details on that shortly. All right, let's, um, well, we could, nah, why don't we get into the news? That okay. way, when we do the question and answer, we're not, conf it's not meshing both the, their the audience's answers and just other questions that they have. Yeah, right. So, so, so everybody understands we need to uh, um, we need everybody to 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 vote right in the in the comment section of which project they think, and then the winner will get the kitsu. Does that make sense? Perfect. So, getting into our first news story. Canadian regulator alerts police to tweets by these terrorists down here. Coinbase and Kraken advocating non-custodial wallets. 
This was kind of concerning the way this was worded. Listen to the way this is worded. Can Canada's security regulator has flagged tweets by Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong and Kraken CEO Jesse Powell who encouraging people to use non-custodial wallets to evade freeze orders by the Trudeau government. Um, what if we used a different way of saying that? Um, that they weren't encouraging people to evade freeze orders. What if they were encouraging people in a way where they would be able to just actually keep their own sovereignty over their own money? So, like, this this part's a quote, right? So they're quoting, you know, about this. Just They're quoting from someone encouraging people to use non-custodial wallets to evade freeze orders. Well, like the freeze orders, like the little lady in Ontario, Canada, that donated $25 for what, whatever, one of the GoFundMes that got her whole bank account frozen. So is she evading the order if she goes to like non-custodial wallets because she still wants to have access to her own funds because what, she's labeled a terrorist supporter because she supported a peaceful rally? Language is power, and the language here is really, really concerning, the way they lang the language from there. Now, generally, the article isn't that way. You can sh notice a shift in the language, but tweets by CEOs of Coinbase and Crack and Flag to police. Canadian regulator and Ontario Security Commission has alerted the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and other federal authorities to these tweets concerning Canada's Emergency Act by Coinbase CEO. Now, this is a little bit old news because um, Trudeau has stepped up and scaled back his emergency powers, and they're starting to re like unfreeze the accounts of the little old ladies who gave $25 or anyone who gave $25 or whatever, these small contributions, perhaps because the people in Canada actually started pulling out all their money from banks in massive numbers terrorists trying to evade crackdowns it's just people want control of their own money and we thought in canada that you do have sovereignty of your own money right and we're starting to learn that maybe you don't maybe you give to a charity that sometimes somebody considers bad down the road and then you don't own your own money anymore so that was interesting and so we wanted to bring this up this is why i like the privacy coin narrative this is why cryptocurrency is so urgent not what is it, central bank digital currencies and that they can like freeze your accounts at any time. Whew. It should take a specific person by person court order to freeze somebody's accounts. And there are reasons for that. But some general thing that anybody who gave to some kind of charity, that is like tyrannical, right? Because money is speech. And so Canada, like, Though Canada doesn't have like a constitution like the U.S., the charter is uh, supposed to be still free speech that you can voice your opinion without being shuttered for it. At least we thought. All right, on to a very interesting story related to crypto. Now, in 2017, the big thing in 2017 that everyone said was like, win Lambo, right? Everyone, by everyone, like, like the space always talked about it and all these pictures of Lamborghinis went everywhere. So it was a fun piece that everyone was talking about. An artist blew up a Lamborghini to protest greed in the crypto culture. Now, what's interesting about the word greed, it's not my favorite word because people use this to kind of shame others for success. Now, what I've learned is about 90% of the very rich people that I've met are actually really well-developed people. About 10% of them are like narcissist pigs. And so I, I think sometimes the 90% get lumped in with the 10% and they throw this number around. And what's interesting is he blew up a Lamborghini to protest greed in crypto culture. And the charred remains are now being sold as NFTs. So, wow, that is those are some <laughs> great pictures though. Oh my goodness gracious. Can you imagine? He's selling 888 of these NFTs. The car was like between two hundred and three hundred thousand uh, dollars, from what I understand. So, like, like now can what you imagine happens? doing that and not <laughs> and then not selling any NFTs? Yeah, that nobody buys them. He definitely took a risk, right? And he took a risk because he's a capitalist. He's a capitalist, decrying capitalism, a uh, kind of on the greed of capitalism and um, the free market of cryptocurrency. And then, like, hopefully. 
Well, if the guy's successful, he's hoping to make maybe a million dollars off of his two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bet, right? Interesting. I have no idea how this will go. That that is a sexy car, though. Yeah, they need to I'm, sell them. I'm about. sad to see that gone to the world. <laughs> they need to sell them for about three hundred dollars each to break even. So you know, we'll see what happens. Three hundred dollars each is all. And there's only eight hundred and eighty-eight. I think he needs far more than that. Three thousand dollars each. Three thousand. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I put, I, yeah. somebody pull out a calculator. I use tell the us calculator. Right. I don't know. Okay, so maybe you're right. Three hundred dollars, eight hundred eighty. Okay. Yep, you're right. Sam Bankman Fried breaks down how algos have played a big part of Bitcoin's drop in light of the worsening Russia-Ukraine conflict. This was fascinating. So Sam Bankman Fried, how he really started making his money earlier in crypto was through just trading and successful trading over time. And so I I actually give his opinion on this a lot of weight. And he was saying, suggest that cryptocurrency's recent correlation with the equities explains why Bitcoin is tumbling more than the benchmark S&P 500 as conflict escalates between Russia and Ukraine. So essentially he was saying that it trades at a multiplier uh, like when the stock market goes up or the S&P 500 goes up 1%, crypto tends to go up by 3%. And the reverse is true. When they go down by 1%, then crypto tends to go down by 3%. And it could be that a lot of these larger funds <coughs> or whales have their algorithms just trading based on those numbers. And that's why we still see such a high correlation between the stock market plunging and the crypto market plunging. That would be fascinating if there are some large institution with massive funds that their algorithms are set up that way. Mm, really curious. On the last day, the S&P 500 is down about 4% and Bitcoin is down about 8%. Why? Well, I mean, because of the obvious, he said. <laughs> Interesting article. Um, crypto exchange Coinbase's trading volume surge on retail interest. This is some great news. Wouldn't you all agree? U.S. cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase Global Inc. on Thursday reported a surge in quarterly trading volumes on a sequential basis as volatility in prices drew in retail traders. So even though prices are down, what they're saying is tons of new people are creating Coinbase accounts and coming into the market. That is fantastic news. I'm telling you, it's setting up for another leg of the bull market is my opinion. I'm often right on these things. Now, I wish I could get to the point that I was always right on everything, but I, in order for that to happen, I need my magic crystal ball from Walmart to work, and it doesn't. So, so it's up sixty-seven percent. Jay, my my question is like, so so much more money is coming into the space, but so many projects are launching as well, right? So, like, like at what point does that money not just get diluted to so many you know different different coins that are out there? Some of, it, <laughs> some of it does get diluted. But what happens during a massive, massive rally is people start selling off homes. They start selling off $500,000 in their, like, stock portfolio to invest in crypto. So you see, like, a massive number amount of money come in. And so there's definitely a multiplier, multiplier effect. So people think, like, say if the, the market cap is something as $50 million, for it to go to a market cap of 500 million, people think that like 450 million additional needs to come in for that to happen, and it doesn't. Um, in fact, not even a whole lot has to trade hands for the price to jump up tremendously. Because what happens is, well, the price that people are willing to buy versus people are willing to sell. In fact, what can happen is almost no tra none of it trades hands. So say, we're going to use, for example, one of my favorite projects, um, Ecomi, and their their token price is around 0.4 cents. And so let's say it, it goes to 10 cents. Well, how would that happen? Well, what would happen is that some news comes out that Ecomi investors that are holding Ecomi's token, Omi, are expecting the token to really, really go up. So nobody, nobody is willing to sell it at 0.4 cents. So no tokens have changed hands. So then some offers come in, you know, all these bid prices of people trying to buy it and then all of a sudden it gets raised all the way to a penny and that point two people jump ship they're like you know what at a penny i'm good i'm out so the price just went even though only two sellers were able to buy and 
or two sellers sold and, and two buyers were able to buy, the price went from 0.4 cents all the way to a penny. But then nobody else is willing to sell until the bids where people are trying to buy it and they're putting in prices that they're willing to pay go all the way to 10 cents. And then, you know, f half of the buyers start trying to jump ship. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all, the, all the buy orders at 10 cents get filled and then the price starts coming down. So not much has to change hands for prices to skyrocket. What has to happen is that people get way more bullish than bearish on a massive sense. What's funny is prices increasing brings a lot of attention, which brings further price increases, which is why we almost always over pump and then we over dump. And that's why there's so much money to be made in crypto, because when you buy when things over dump, and then you sell them when they over pump, you realize some massive gains because what you did was you bought low and you sold high. Make sense? Let's take a look at what kind of answers we're getting. Yeah, we better get into that. We got 15 minutes left and we still mm -hmm. got to give away a couple of things. Uh, by my count, um, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Cornucopius is the winner. Um, we had a couple of people who were voting for multiple things, but I'm counting Bearish Bull as saying <laughs> Kopi um, with an ear of corn. Dougie Collinson says Kopi wins it for me. Can't wait to get my bubble jet later. And then <laughs> Gut Back to Nature also says Kopi will be my single vote. Um, so number one so far is Cornucopia. So that means Dennis, Dennis, we need your telegram. Yeah, so we're replying. I don't know if Dennis is on this stream, but Jay's replying to your comment right now. Um, so hopefully you get that notification. We'll get your Telegram handle, and we will give you the Kitsu. Do you want to – are we going to open it right now? Yeah, we, we're only going to open one just for time purposes because it takes a little bit to get each one open. And though it says error opening the box, sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. If it doesn't come with a pop-up, then that is true. I'm not seeing the pop-up come up, so I'm a little bit worried. Um, it seems like Polygon's network's been a little bit slow today, so actually it was very slow earlier. There we go. We got the pop-up. All right, you're going to charge me 0 .09 Matic. Prices are really – it's congested. That's a, I mean, it's not a whole lot, um, but it's a lot more than usual. That's about 20 cents. Used to about – two cents or below on the polygon network so they're having some massive congestion let's see if that transaction seems to be happening no the finalized one hasn't popped up there hmm. while we're having issues with this gut gut back to nature asks anybody got details on the bubble jet sale uh we covered it earlier in the show but uh it looks like bearish bull just threw it up here so it's coming up in an hour and 12 minutes 120 ada for one mint um mint is Oh, okay, yeah, you need 124 um, for fees and everything. So so there you go. Perfect. So while we're waiting on that, um, and we'll open offline the other two winners. Let's pick our other two winners. Yeah, so um, number two, I think, is Alluvium. So we've got Cram, who said Alluvium. Who else? There was one other person. Have to vote Alluvium, says Jester's Rune. I think that that might be the other one that got multiple votes for just single votes. <laughs> Jester's Rune says, how are there 51 people listening? And actually, we got 455 watching now and less votes. So, yeah, that are watching this live. Uh, so, yeah, take the time to vote. It makes sense. So we got... Corny Hope is one. I'd say Alluvium is next and third place winner. So Jester's Rune actually is the one who brought up Alluvium. So I know his Discord. Um, yeah. Let's see. Rhododendro voted Legends of Crypto. See, it's going to be tough if there's not another one. Chris Ashby votes Decimated. And what's cool about Battle Chris Guardians Ashby is the one Mark. who brought up uh, Legends of Crypto. So it's that shows some altruism, and he's voting for somebody <laughs> else's project. Yeah, but I'm not seeing... So there's a Battle of Guardians. This is fascinating for everybody, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks for participating. Yeah, that's the challenge of giving away three in one day. We thought we would try it. 
and um, going through and trying to figure out the winners. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask you the question for our one chain giveaway because we're giving away 125 won chain today. Give me the date that the one chain ICO ended. And the first person to give us that date wins the one chain giveaway. And we'll have to get your MetaMask address so that, or excuse me, give us your Telegram address so that we can then write you on Telegram and get your MetaMask address. On all these things, we're never going to ask you for private keys and stuff. We just need your addresses to send things to. In fact, for the Kitsu giveaway, we just need your MetaMask address. We're keeping that to the side. I think they'll be transferable pretty soon. I don't know that they are yet. Um, and then once they're transferable, we will send you what you want, plus the love potion or the mating potion that came with it, the breeding potion. Rhododendro came in quick, 3rd of, 3rd of October 2017. We've got a bunch of people yep. around that. Rhododendros. Paul Coggins said October 4th. Bearish Bull said it October 2nd. That's when it started. Web Zombies got it right just a little bit too late. Dougie Collinson got it right. Rhododendro, Rhododendro is our winner. Congratulations, brother. So we will get that sent to. We need you to send. We need to get your telegram so that then um, D will get your MetaMask address. All right. We're through that, and um, let's see if, did anyone hear the music coming up? No. Nope. It doesn't look like the transaction came through, and, and with it asking such a high fee, usually that worries me that it's going to fail, so I might have to do these when the congestion slows down. So we know who our first and second winners were. Did we decide if, um, who the third place winner I don't was? know. I don't know what to do, man, because there's not, like, there isn't another clear winner. So it feels <laughs> We're like going we to give it to... Chris Ashby with the Legends of Crypto game. Okay, nice. So, because he would have definitely won if he had voted for his own project. Yeah, that's a that's he could have thrown it that way. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're Good gonna call. he's gonna be our third winner. So, uh, I I know his information. So, um, I don't need his MetaMask address. I will get it from him. Cool. Nice. Congratulations, you guys. Man, um, so many winners. Fun. That's awesome. Mark, yes. Mark Esquivel is in here again. He won one, and I still don't have his Telegram handle. Um, I really need that, man, or else like, I'm not going to be able to get you your uh, Kitsu that you won uh, uh, like last week. Yeah, if you don't have one, you'll have to create one. Um, some people don't use Telegram. It's so used in the crypto space, and I remember prior to crypto, I didn't use Telegram at all. So um, <laughs> it wasn't until I was in crypto for a while that I realized how important Telegram is as a tool in crypto. So if you don't have one, you'll have to create it to create one and then let us know. Cool. <clears throat> that news is a lot of exciting. Um, thanks for participating. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. You want to hit just a couple questions if we've got any. I, I know it. right at the top of the show, um, Anna Marie Sardina, can you touch on VeChain, please? You want to take a look at that? I absolutely want to take a look at VeChain. VeChain is one of the ones that really, really pumped before. And I remember was, everyone was like, VeChain, VeChain. I was like, I just don't chase green candles. I had already sold my VeChain position. And um, so here is what it did in 2021. So March and April, it went absolutely crazy, right? So I sold off, turns out it was pretty early. I sold it about 10 cents. Left a lot of money on the table because it went all the way to 28 cents, right? And what I do is I buy low and then I sell high. And it is definitely some attractive prices. Now, has it bottomed? Uh, this actually might be the first leg of a W that it might have bottomed. Could come down more. So a couple of ways this could play out. Like VeChain's been out of the narrative for a long time now. And what happens is narrative comes back around. So this could be like one of a W that goes a little bit higher the second time than this, but that's often what happens. Now, sometimes it just goes like this, but not usually. Usually it does this, and some people kind of still, they panic sell. They don't panic sell at the bottom. They panic sell just above the bottom that they're like, oh, well, finally it's going up. I'm going to sell it before it tanks. And then they sell it, and then it's like it tanks, and they're like, oh, I knew it was going to tank, and then it stops here, and then it goes poof all the way to a parabolic run, right? And they're like, oh, crap, and VeChain goes to, like, you know, $4 or something. And they're like, no, I sold it $0.04. Cents. So a little bit of dramatics added by me. But this often happens, right? And this is why patients pay so big. So is VeChain probably going to be around four years from now? I would say probably. Um, they... Uh, 
I can't remember their involvement with Louis Vuitton. I think the former CEO of Louis Vuitton is the one who created that. And they wanted to track products as well as authenticity. And there's definitely a need for that. And blockchain is really, really good for that. I mean, you can do that on centralized databases. It's going to be more trusted doing that right on the blockchain. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about their future. I'm excited about where prices are at because I like things when they're really, really cheap. And notice it hit below July's lows. So you made really good money, though, if you bought in July when everyone was panicked and the sentiment was terrible like it has been lately. And then all of a sudden it went pretty good And if you took some profits. But it's now even lower than it was before. Cool. Good suggestion. What else do we have in there? Uh, not a ton of questions today, Jay. Um, yeah, I mean, we may just want to wrap. We've got about four minutes left. Um, so want to read Fried Food Rock's comment. I like how Andre Jick puts yeah, it. Yeah, I've laughed. I, I bought the this. dip. The dippity dip. Then the dippity dip dip. And now I'm dipped out. So just holding and waiting. <laughs> right? I was laughing. So. That, <laughs> that <laughs> it summarizes my crypto winter experience, right? And also this experience because I've been buying the dip and then it gets even cheaper. And it just, this is what happens. So what sometimes happens is then people dump, right? And um, I don't. I just wait and I'm patient. And wouldn't you know, because a lot of the projects have strong fundamentals. Once you know when the narrative comes back around, because it does, they do tremendously, and then everybody is FOMO buying them, and that's what I'm selling. Sounds simple, right? Simple, I wish more people did it, but I guess, you know, those of you that are here, you're positioned well. Are you ready to be a rainmaker and join the Navy SEALs of crypto to level up your crypto game? I do know this contrarian approach coupled with the fundamental analysis and you add in a whole lot of patience. It works very, very well over time. If you haven't already, consider the all notifications bell and just tune in when you see our videos pop up. We do a live stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific. We also do the Wednesday VV live stream that starts at 7.30 p.m. Pacific now. And then we do shorter videos that sometimes launch during the week. So thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. And remember, no rain, no gain. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, Shit. Right before you could, it was told to buy when it was pouring like a rainmaker should. should. I buy when it's down, don't chase the posts that I miss. Uh, cause I always make the time in mind. I sit the one out, cause I'm patient like that. Hands off, wait for the right time. I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm just a rainmaker running the show. Calculated investments, I don't leave with my heart. Uh, principles are simple, they're leaving a mark. Yeah. Buy when it's boring, just gotta be smart. I sell when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it. Cause when I was selling a parabolic, they dumped it. They call me rich, they call me smart. Uh, I'm a rainmaker, making my own start. I'm with the future, learning the past. Makes it time fly by, years going so fast. The game plan is mine, I'll own it now. When I reach the top, haters asking me how. Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love. And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck. Uh, the time is never better, the time like the present. This next five years is a gift and it's feeling like heaven. I'm committed to learn. Studying to know that nothing comes easy, but when knowledge the gain show, sinking out this wrong consumer will come a bear market. Learning and growing, and when it's slow, would be the target. They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead. The massive decreases can get to your head. Sinking around, the time is better. I'm strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters. Two years time, the ball will bring back the gains. That makes it worth the effort, cause here comes the rain. So let's go, rainmakers, let's make it all happen. The goal of the hate, they the haters be crappy. I'm here for five years, let's do this together. The time is right, the time could be better. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm a rainmaker, making my own start. I'm with the future, learning the past. Makes it time fly by, years going so fast. This game plan is mine, I'll own it now. When I reach the top, haters asking me how. Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments are low. And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck. Uh, haters be hating. Time to slow down no. Addressing what to say When I'm wearing my crown my They're chasing crown. green candles Like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger Helping me to push through, push through. I'm still human And sometimes it is rough it is. And that's what makes me special Simply I stay tough yeah, Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh.